In this lesson, we are going to look at ionic bonding. So ionic bonding is a type of bonding that takes place between metals and non-metals. So let's choose a metal. Let's choose uh, lithium, for example. So we know that I want to just quickly go draw the whole structure, but eventually we'll only be using the Lewis diagrams. But if we just draw the structure of, of lithium, uh, we know that it is it has a positive proton, or it's got positive protons in the middle, or a positive nucleus, that's what I was trying to say. Then it's in row number two, so it's got two energy levels on the outside. And so in energy level number one, it's going to have two electrons. And then in energy level number two, it's got one electron, so it looks something like that. Okay, now I want us to look at chlorine. So it has a nucleus, which is positive. And then it's in energy level number three, so it's going to have three energy levels. In energy level number one, it's going to have one, two electrons. In energy level number two, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. And then in energy level number three, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, in a previous lesson, well, let's just first say that this is lithium and this is chlorine. In a previous lesson, we learned that the main reason that atoms bond, atoms bond in order to have complete outer energy levels. And in that lesson, we learned that, for example, lithium over here would give, would rather lose, it would give this electron away because it would be more difficult for it to try gain seven electrons. It won't do that. It would rather give this electron away. And what we learned was that this chlorine already has two, four, six, seven electrons on the outside. It only needs one more to have eight, which is a complete energy level. So all that happens when these two bond is that this lithium is going to lose its electron, it's going to give its electron away, okay, and then that electron is now going to be floating over here, and that electron is simply going to go to this, or let's actually do something like this, let's put a little green one over here, and that's an electron, and then what happens is that this green one is going to be eliminated, or it's going to be removed from there, and it's rather going to go and land up over there, and what happens now is that this lithium is now very happy. Why? Because it's still got a nucleus, but now the outer energy level, uh, this energy level, we can take that one away. So we only have one outer energy level now, and it's complete. Because remember, energy level number, energy level number one, or row one, only has two places that need to be filled. So this is now complete. Now, this chlorine is very happy, because look at this, it's got two, four, six, eight. So it's got a complete outside energy level. So both atoms are very happy now because they both have complete outer energy levels. So can we see what happened? That the metal, which was lithium, gave its electron to the non-metal. So um, that's another thing about ionic bonding. The metal gives electron or electrons to the non-metal, okay? That is ionic bonding. It's when a metal and a non-metal, uh, um, the one gives its electrons away and the other one accepts it. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is what is gonna happen to this atom now? Is it gonna become positive or negative? Well, over here, it had three protons because it's over there, and it also had three electrons, which are negative. That's what it had over here. But then over here, it's still going to have three protons, but it only has two electrons. And so if you had to add that up, it's now going to be positive. So this, this atom is now going to be positively charged. If you had to go and look at this atom over here, you would see that because it gained one electron, it's going to be negatively charged. It's going to have a negative one charge. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this from now on is we are going to show ionic bonding by using Lewis diagrams. So if we go and draw lithium, 
we know that lithium is in group one, okay? Remember Lewis diagrams, you only need to know the groups. So lithium is in group one, so it means it's got one valence electron, okay? Um, we're only gonna show the valence electrons. We're not gonna show, um, we're not gonna show um, all of the, so for example, if that's lithium, we're not gonna go show all of the electrons. We're just gonna show the valence electron part, which is the part that's on the outside. And that's what the Lewis diagram does. We know that it's got electrons on the inside, but we're just showing the valence ones, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go show uh, chlorine. So chlorine is in here in group seven. So that means it's got seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now, what we learned uh, a few moments ago was that this electron here, I mean, this atom is gonna lose this electron. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that this gets converted into a lithium, which is now going to be positively charged. And then it's gonna give away this electron over here, okay? So you could, you could write here electron. So let me just explain this part carefully because learners get a bit confused here. What happens is that this lithium, which has one electron on the outside, it's got one valence electron. When it gives that electron away, then it's gonna become a lithium with no electrons on the outside. You see there's no electrons on the outside, it's been given away. And because it gave an electron away, it becomes positively charged, okay? That's like its valency, this is its valency, okay? And then it also gave away, so, so, so then it also gave away this electron over here. So let me try to draw that nicely for you. We had a lithium atom which had one electron on the outside, one valence electron. And then we converted it into a lithium with no electron on the outside, so now it's positively charged. And then it also, that, that electron that it gave away is now over here floating around in the atmosphere, okay? What happens with the chlorine is that the chlorine is going to add with this electron, so it's gonna combine with this electron, and together it's gonna become chlorine like this with the X. You see, so what's happened is that this X has landed up going over there. But this is the way you would show it. So this is step one, this is step two. Now, what's important is that this chlorine is now negatively charged because it got one electron. But when there's a whole bunch of things around it, you must just put it in a square bracket like this, and you're gonna put a negative one like that. Or you could actually just put a negative like that. Now the third step is that this lithium is now positive, and this chlorine is now negative. So they are gonna be attracted to each other. So we can say that the lithium, which is now positive, is gonna attract to the chlorine, which is now negative, and they are gonna be converted into a structure that looks like this. You're just gonna put them next to each other. So you're just gonna put them next to each other with its little plus, and then the Cl with all of its things, which is negative. And then your teacher might go one step further and just take away uh, the plus and the minus and all the brackets, and they'll just say Li Cl, and then they might even say that that is in the solid phase. Okay, so let's do a whole bunch more examples of ionic bonding now. Okay, I know that right now you might be feeling a little bit confused about what we've just done. Um, that's normal, but now let's do some more examples. And we have got quite a challenging example coming up at a later part of this video, so stick around with that. It's gonna, it's gonna be involving weird numbers and things like that. In this example, we're gonna look at the bonding between magnesium and oxygen. Step one, draw a Lewis diagram for each one. So uh, we're gonna look at, because we need to try to figure out, is this gonna be ionic, covalent, or metallic? So we're gonna go look at magnesium. Now magnesium is in group number two on the periodic table, there it is. So that means it has two electrons, two valence electrons. Obviously it's got 12 electrons in total, but for Lewis diagrams, we're only looking at the electrons on the outside, the valence electrons. Now we're gonna do oxygen. So oxygen is in group six, okay? So it's got six valence electrons. It's got eight electrons in total, but six of them are valence. And once again, we only look at valence. Now, can you figure out a nice way to make both of these atoms happy? Well, 
would it be better for this one to lose all of those six electrons or would it rather be better to just gain two of them, two electrons over there? Because if it can gain two electrons, then it will be complete. The other thing is, would it be better for this one to try to gain six electrons so that it becomes complete? Or would it be better for this magnesium to simply get rid of those two electrons and then it will be complete as well? Well, if you've watched the previous lessons where we spoke about um, how the, the how different things gain electrons, different things lose electrons, you'd see that this is a metal and metals lose electrons. It'll be easier to lose these two electrons and it'll be easier for this one to gain those two electrons. So what happens is that these two electrons are just going to be donated to this atom over here. And so your end result is going to look something like this. But we need to show how that all happens now. So step one, we're going to take this metal and we're going to show how that metal loses those electrons. So have a look here. Whoops, you see how it's got no more electrons on the outside, no more valence electrons, it lost them. And so we need to show that those two electrons are now over there. Okay, that's step one. Oh, and then, and then what did, if this magnesium atom over here loses two electrons, then it will become positive. And that's where valency comes into it. So it's valency is positive too, so it becomes positive. Okay, now, those, this, this oxygen atom is now going to add those electrons to it, and what will happen is that it will become like that. And because it now added two electrons to it, it becomes negatively charged. So you can do that. Now the third step is to show that this positive ion over here, by the way, this is an ion. An ion is a charged atom or molecule, okay? So this one is positively charged. We call that a cation, by the way. And this one is negatively charged. We call that an anion, okay? So what happens now is that those two ions are oppositely charged. This one's positive, this one's negative. So they are gonna be attracted to each other. And so the last step, we have to go and um, put those all together. So we're gonna say Mg plus two plus the oxygen part, and what happens is that that now just becomes, you're just gonna write them next to each other. So Mg plus two with oxygen two minus. And then your teacher might go one step further and just say that that'll become MgO, which is a solid. Let's do another example. Now it's gonna start getting a little bit more challenging. So let's now do an example between lithium and oxygen. So step one, go draw the Lewis diagram. So the Lewis diagram only uses the valence electrons. So that's just by looking at the group number. So lithium is in group one. Oxygen is in group six. So that's gonna be one, two, whoops, it's rather do it the proper way. You put one at a time and then you go again. There we go. Now, we know that lithium is going to lose one electron. And then oxygen is going to gain two electrons. Why? Because then it will be complete, okay? And remember when I show you lithium, we must always remember that lithium actually has two energy levels. The, oh wait, let, that doesn't look nice. Let's do, um, it's got a positive nucleus and then it's got two energy levels, okay? and in energy level number one, it's got two electrons. And then in energy level number two, it's got one electron. But we only show this one in a Lewis diagram. So when it loses that electron, it then has that. And so it would be fully complete, okay? And that's stuff we've learned about before. So, and then this one is gonna rather gain, this one's gonna try to gain two electrons so that it can be complete, okay? So let's show how lithium loses that electron. So you're gonna say lithium, well, let's do it here, because this, this example is going to be a bit more interesting now. So lithium is going to be converted into a normal lithium ion with no valence electrons, okay? But because it's lost an electron, it becomes positive. And then the electron that it gave away is here. Now, oxygen, here's where things get weird. Oxygen needs two electrons, 
okay? So oxygen needs two electrons in order to be able to fill up this entire energy. So it's gonna go like this. And then because this oxygen now has two extra electrons, it's gonna become negatively charged. So we'll say negative two or two minus, okay? And that's the same as its valency. Okay, now the problem that we have is that this oxygen over here needs two electrons. But this lithium only gave away one electron. So when this happens, we have a bit of a problem because how is this oxygen supposed to get two electrons if this lithium only gives away one? What you do when this happens is you have to make sure that these two numbers are the same. So we're gonna multiply this entire reaction with two, okay? So that means we're gonna put a two in the front there, a two in the front there, and this will become a two. Now, when these two are the same, you are gonna combine them like we normally do. So we're gonna take the cation, which is the positive one, you're gonna add it to the anion, and what you then form is you just put them next to each other, like this, like that. Now your teacher might then write it in a different way, where they'll say, okay, so we have two Li's, so you'll say Li with a two, and then we have one oxygen, like that. And then they might even say that that is a solid. Let's do another example, an even more challenging example. Now we're gonna do aluminium, and we are gonna do oxygen. Okay, this is the most challenging example you can get with ionic bonding. So if we look at the Lewis diagram of aluminium, we can see that it is in group one, two, three. So it's in group three, okay? If we look at oxygen, it's in group six. So we put six valence electrons. Okay, now, we know that this aluminium is going to lose three electrons. Remember, we've spoken about that in the past. It wouldn't make sense for it to try gain five things. That would be too difficult. It would rather lose these three. It's rather gonna lose those three because it's a metal, it loses electrons. So this is gonna lose three electrons. Now, this oxygen over here is going to accept two electrons because then it would be complete. So this one's gonna gain two electrons. So whenever you have a metal and a non-metal or something that loses with something that gains, that is ionic bonding, ionic bonding. In later lessons, we're gonna look at different types of bonding like covalent and metallic, and those are totally different to what we are doing now. So the first step is let's show that the, the, the metal loses its electrons, so it's gonna become Al, uh, with all of its electrons are gonna be gone, so we're gonna say plus three electrons. And then because it's lost three electrons, it's gonna become positively charged by three, okay? And that's the same as its valency. Now, the um, oxygen is now going to, the oxygen needs to gain two electrons, okay? And so it would become like that. And because it gains two electrons, it becomes negatively charged, so we show it like that. Okay, now these two numbers are not the same, so we need to make them the same. So what we'll do is we'll multiply this reaction by two, and then we'll multiply this reaction by three. So that means we're gonna put a two in the front here, a two in the front here, and this will become a six. And then we'll put a three in the front here, three times two is six, and that'll be a three. So you see how we used like a lowest common multiple so that those are now the same. Now we're gonna just go put these two ions together, the cation and the anion. So we're gonna say two Al plus three plus three of these oxygen ions. And that's just gonna convert into two Al. Now you just put them next to each other. Oh, there's a three there. Okay, and then if your teacher goes one step further, there's two Al's, so you'd say Al2, and then there's three oxygens, three. And then you, your teacher might say, in the solid phase. 